You're seeing something that feels glowing and ghostly, and especially the particles begin to really feel like they're there. You, you can't see everywhere, but when, you, when it comes in your view, things kind of slowly drift in. We're outside Fort Lauderdale, Florida, at Magic Leap's headquarters. Magic Leap's technology has been a mystery to this point. But here I am wearing Magic Leap 1. Magic Leap didn't allow us to show you what we saw through the headset, though. And we're upset about that because the reality of Magic Leap's technology has already been under scrutiny. I was able to demo the headset for over half an hour, experiencing a variety of apps, games, and some launch experiences that'll be available on the device. I'll try to explain what I saw to the best of my ability. There's definitely awareness of where my hands are. First, let's look at the headset. The Magic Leap One's headset kind of looks pretty steampunk, and it has circular lenses. The inside have little displays, if you can make them out, that are using the light field technology that creates those holographic projections that allow you to see the real world and see things projected on top of it. There are speakers inside in the band, which handle 3D audio, and pretty well done, actually. The only thing I've tried that's been like that has been Oculus Go, but this is projecting in a room while you're still listening to everything else that's in the room. Yeah, the sound is very seamless to the position of things, and it actually really helps find where things are. So I'm finding, as I move around, cues to where I need to look start happening um, in audio, and then I know that maybe something's over there that I might have missed. The band is adjustable, and it angles up a bit, but it actually felt pretty comfortable to wear. The cameras that are studded all throughout here, these are mostly for spatial tracking. This has an ability to mesh out and map the world around you to a degree that I haven't seen in any other headset. It did a really impressive job of tracking walls, floor, and furnitures in the demo rooms that I was testing it in to be able to get that map and then to be able to layer 3D effects so they could actually hide behind some things if they wanted to or rest on top of them. Now it's supposed to be able to remember that mesh so that when you come back there later, you can still use that space and even set apps up to work in that space. This is corded down to a wearable pack. This is where the processor and the battery are. This has an NVIDIA processor inside the handle graphics. It has a heat vent and it's basically a wearable PC. This is the controller, and if you've used VR, this is pretty familiar in terms of the ability to have full tracking, a touchpad here, a home button, a trigger, a second button over here, and also haptics, so this vibrates a bit when you use it. It also has six degree of freedom tracking, so it's a step up from other one controller headsets in VR. So this also has the ability to work in combination with things like hand gestures and motion. So Magic Leap One notices where your hands are and a lot of apps don't even need you to use the control at all. I'm creating a vortex out of my hands that's drifting and becoming this sparkling, I mean, the best way I could describe it is that everything is definitely around me, but you're seeing ghostly layers that are living along, <laughs> alongside with you. And right now, the music just disappeared into a little black hole. Okay, forgive the weird descriptive beat poetry. I'm trying the Cigaro's musical AR app, Tonandi, which creates music in a sort of undersea forest. AR is hard to explain. Much like Microsoft HoloLens, Magic Leap projects its 3D illusions into the real world, but has a limited field of view. Magic Leap wouldn't let us record what I got to see and experience through the headset, but the company did make its own videos for some of the apps. It represents the graphic level of what I tried pretty well, but keep in mind that what I saw was all in 3D. And the viewing area, or the field of view, is far narrower than what you see here. It's more like seeing ghosts through a small window. I can still see my entire room, but having virtual things in only part of my vision can disrupt the illusion. I also got to try Magic Leap's Create app, which is an art toolkit that allowed me to paint in the air and also drop dinosaurs and knights and other cartoon things and have them run around the room. Also, this headset didn't work with my glasses. I needed contacts, and anyone who tries it will need special prescription lenses to pop into it. I wear glasses, and so they were kind enough in the demo version that I saw today to take into account my prescription, but that will be the same 
for other people who are buying this headset when it comes out. And if you're wondering how it feels and fits on your head, I have to say it's pretty good. They spent a lot of time figuring out the weight distribution. So it slides over your head and you pull out in the back to adjust to your head size and you wear it tilted up. And if you've tried other VR gear, you know that it can be very heavy in the front and pull your head down a little bit. And that's not what happens here. They actually are going to have two sizes of this headset based on the distribution of how far your eyes are set apart. And they've also taken into account that the bridge of your nose, which is where this is going to sit, is different for everyone, and that addresses the comfort issue. So they'll have five different inserts that you can choose and that will be fitted to suit you when you get your headset. So how do we feel? Well, it's a lot to take in, and I really wish that I had been able to share a lot of what that looked like with you. That's the hardest part with any of these experiences, so when you can't do that, then you're left recounting it. The experiences I had, I can tell you I was shooting robots that were sprouting from a wall, kind of like early HoloLens demos that I tried years ago, but this time with better graphics, with better sound, and with a controller that was able to morph into a gun. It seems like every major tech player has aspirations for AR. Magic Leap 1 might be the most complete hardware at the moment, but it feels extremely experimental. A bit of a magic step forward, not a leap.